welcome to Inside Indy. I'm Kelly Vaughn, and thank you for joining us this Sunday evening. Um, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and um, it's really about celebrating life. That's really what it's all about, celebrating uh, the lives of those who are survivors of breast cancer. And here in the studio to help us uh, to do that, to join the celebration, are we have Denise Sanders, um, who is the founder and visionary for your big charity event, which is called Glitz and Glamour? Yes. All right. Welcome to the show. Thank you. We have Nefertiti Reed. You are a breast cancer survival, yes. survivor and a model in the upcoming fashion show that we're going to be talking about <laughs> today. Yes. Welcome to the show. Thank you. And then we have Tyus Burks. Yes. And you are the show and stage director for the big runway show. Yes, ma'am. Welcome to Inside Indy. Thank you for having me. Wow, now you do this every year, right, Denise? So yes. tell us what people can expect for the big glitz and glamour show. Awesome. Um, this year is our seventh year wow. um, that we have been doing this, uh, and back actually, actually the fifth year for the runway show. Okay. But what we want to do, and I thank you for saying celebrating, because that's what the event is going to be about: celebrating our survivors honoring them because this year we're going to also have not only a runway show, but it will be an award show for the honorees and survivors. Uh -huh. So they will be receiving awards, um, also uh, monetary awards, baskets. It's just going to be a phenomenal e event. Um, this year, the first time um, that we brought the Pink Paradise Boutique. So uh -huh. that's going to be an added uh, little the luxury Pink there. Paradise Boutique. Okay. Yes. Okay. <laughs> And so inside of the boutique will be exclusive uh, designers uh, and VIP uh, vendors as well. Um, okay. This year also, and we'll let Tyus talk, so talk about it, but we're going to have a live band, and it's just going to be an awesome celebration for our survivors. Okay, okay. So you're inviting survivors to participate, yes. and those who, family members of those survivors and, and beyond, right? Exactly. We want the community to come out. Um, this will be a great time to give back and also uh, honor survivors, honor and actually learn about breast cancer, uh, a self, um, I want to say a self-awareness and taking care of yourself. Mm -hmm. um, we, we have speakers from Pink Forever um, that will be there, uh, Pink Forever organization, and also Fit by Renee. And uh -huh. she's um, uh, going to talk to us about clean eating, um, healthy lifestyle, getting ourselves together. Um, so that we can be fit for the kingdom and just live a lot, a lot longer. Okay, okay. And we're going to show some pictures of Renee because she's Renee Pillow, right? Yes. She's just phenomenal. And yes. I think she's like 47. She looks like she's 22. Yes, she does. So, so she's going to be one of our speakers. <laughs> yes. Okay, so on the runway will be Nefertiti Reed, and you're a breast cancer survivor. Tell us about your journey. Do you mind sharing that with us? Yes, I, I don't mind. I was diagnosed when I was 33. Um, you look like you're 23. I'm not sure how to say that. What kind of clock y'all operating on? Um, so I was diagnosed when I was 33, and it was a big deal. It was a big deal because I was healthy. And, um, and honestly, before I was diagnosed, I didn't know how important um, getting exams or breast cancer awareness was. I thought it would not affect me. I was so young. But it did. It's not in my family. Um, I didn't know anybody who had it. So this event, to me, is a big thing because I didn't really care about breast cancer. You see breast cancer in mine, you see people wearing pink, but it didn't hit home. And I want people to be aware that it can affect you. And if you don't know somebody, tomorrow you may. Because mm -hmm. it's getting younger and younger each and every day. Right. Mm -hmm. So how did you find out? I actually had a lump. I had a lump. It was hard, and um, mine is estrogen-based. It's from my ovaries. And so mm -hmm. as my ovaries are working, my cancer is called active cancer. It will never be in remission until my ovaries are taken out. So I had to go through a chemo and everything like that, and I had this heart lump. And in a week or two, it would go away. After my cycle was gone, it would go away. And I went to my doctor and they couldn't find it when it was gone. And then they did an ultrasound and they took a biopsy and they gave me a call and said it was cancer. I laughed because I was like, no, not me, I'm so young. But it can affect anyone. And then I went through chemo and radiation and I just had a checkup actually on Tuesday 
okay. um, because they seen something that, that, was ab that was abnormal again. So that's another thing that people don't know when you have something that's not in um, remission that you have active cancer cells in your body. And once you have a journey, it's actually that, it's a journey. So each and every day, each and every month, I have to be concerned about my body and my health that it could come back each, even because after chemo, um, my ovaries woke back up. They put me through chemo um, and said that I couldn't have kids because my ovaries were producing too much estrogen. And so wow. it has anything, nothing to do with um, being healthy or not working out. Mine is just basically just a woman's growth hormone that is kind of overpowerful. Wow. So do you you have kids at all? I do not, not yet. But my yeah. ovaries are working again, <laughs> okay. and I choose to let them work. So that's something that right. I have to be mindful about. They did suggest that I take an um, a estrogen blocker, but at this moment, um, I'm just not taking that right now. Okay. So I choose, I go, I have four doctors. I see them periodically um, every two to three months. Okay. Wow. Wow. Well, I commend you. Con I, in, and I congratulate you for what you're doing as a part of your survival and how you're sh sharing this with viewers uh, and making them aware that it, it can happen to them. And as you say, you think, oh, me, why? Why me? And, and you know, no history in your family. That really is, is yes. you know, is, is, a, a, is a cause for concern because typically we attribute it to that. But that we see now that's not necessarily the case. So do get your exams, self-exams, exactly. go get your mammogram. Uh, the doctor does an examination as well, so, okay. And uh, you're all decked out. We're going to talk about the fashion show <laughs> with the uh, Tyus, but I, I do want people to, can you, is, can she stand up for just a second? Or just can, yeah. And do like a quick turn real quick? I cannot stand up at the moment. Okay. Okay, because, okay. But I love, I love your outfit. I love it. Thank you. Isn't that I can, gorgeous? Oh, I can she came to dressed size. to kill. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. But okay. that's why, Miss Kelly, I'm a breast cancer thriver. I know people, when people are just su surviving to me, they are just getting air. I'm a thriver. Each and every day, I thank God, because each and every day, I can be diagnosed again. And what mm -hmm. happens if it does come back? I still got to... Mm -hmm. I, that's why I'm happy for to be part of the organization to let people know that we go through life, we have journeys, not just breast cancer, but life trials and tribulations, and you can still keep going each and every day. Right, right. Mm -hmm. Because if, if and, and, and I hate to put it, it's not that, it is oftentimes something else, and sometimes when we think, wow, we have a challenge, and you look at some, look at the people who lost their lives in the, in the South, and yes. so it's, it, Everybody's journey is different, and it is, as Gilda Radner used to say, is always something. Yes. It's some challenge or another. Mm -hmm. Tyus. Yes. Okay, you are the director for the runway show, so take us there. Yes. What, we're gonna, what are we going to see? So um, I was brought in by Sister Denise. Um, as you know, this is her seventh year, so she was telling me she wanted it grand, and it has to be big. It has to, you know, every show, it gets bigger and bigger. So the seventh year show, she was telling me her ideas and her thought process. I was like, okay, well, how can I make this just a little bit more extra, uh -huh. a little bit more grand? <laughs> so um, this year we're going to have musical acts, um, Mariah Ivy, Manon Voice, um, Premium Blend is one of the bands that will be coming. We have an in-house band that will be there. Um, we have different vocalists that are coming, uh, Michael Willis. We have L.A. Norris. So we have that going on during, like, the social hour. Mm -hmm. And then we have the runway show going on. We also have stand-in models this year. So as the guests What's are there, stand-in models. What's a stand-in? So mm -hmm. as the guests are walking around, you know, sipping their cocktails, you know, eating their hors d'oeuvres, we're going to have models posed at different places in the venue from uh, the different designers and collections so they can walk wow. around so and this see the pieces. Kind of meander in the crowd. Yeah, and... so it's like art meets fashion. So we're fusing it all. Um, I come from music, you know, that's one of my careers, and then wardrobe styling and the fashion. So to be able to mix the two and be as artistic as I want to and, you know, influence and all that, I love it. Right. And you're, you're a musician or a singer? Uh, I'm a singer and songwriter. Oh, right. Yeah. Okay. 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 Sing a few bars for us. Right now? Uh-huh. Right now. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, do you, I must think Tis So Sweet, because that is my go-to song. Okay. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take 
I wasn't expecting all no, yeah. this. Yeah. <laughs> the show is starting right now. So this is lo lovely, lovely, yeah. very well done, very well done. So just from that alone, I can tell it's going to be a fantastic Phenomenal. runway show. Yes, and that's not even the runway show. That's just the social hour. Okay. That's just when the guests begin to arrive. That's when they begin to like, okay, let me get a feel for the event. Let me see what it's about. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're here for breast cancer. So that's just the start of it. We're not even into the whole fashion show. Okay. Because we have phenomenal designers that are here. Oh, nice. Um, Sister Denise is one of our designers. So mm -hmm. she'll be doing her collection. We have Bridget Love from Twisted Denim. We have Sharice Muir. She's our vintage designer. We have Runway Divas, B Gals, Black Fox, and a host of different models. Uh, talented models and everybody what I love about it is everyone is here for one cause and to support one thing which is breast cancer any form of cancer and it's just to experience and see all the love that you receive mm. from doing this event is what makes it all worthwhile mm -hmm. okay okay so how can people uh, be a part of this um, in terms of whether it's buying tickets or are there any other opportunities do you need volunteers that kind of thing well, yes, the event will take place, we didn't say that, on October the 7th. This year it will be from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, so we invite everyone to come out. You may get tickets um, actually by contacting me at 317-514-0339, or I can send a link to you um, via email, and mm -hmm. you just pay with your credit card on the link. Okay. So, yes. Uh, everything will start at 11 a.m. And we're encouraging everyone to come out. As Ty has just graciously uh, told us, everything is going to take take off at the social hour. So don't wait for the runway show. Come on at the social hour. We have vendors there. And then, of course, you want to get in that exclusive Pink Paradise boutique. So, there, yeah. There, <laughs> and the food. So, about. yeah, it's going to be a wonderful time. Okay. Well, sounds good to me. Uh, Denise, of course, Nefertiti, and Tyus, thank you all so much for joining us. Thank, thank, thank you, you for having me. On Inside Indy, and when we come back, we're going to a peaceful place with uh, a local psychologist who uh, will help take us there when we come back. And we're back here on Inside Indy. Imagine a community where the murder rate dropped drastically or the incidences of uh, domestic violence plummeted. Imagine that. Imagine violence decreasing in our community. Is it possible? Can we train, adjust, impact our minds to stop violent behavior? Can we affect our brains in other ways to affect other behaviors? Uh, we have an expert in the studio today to tell us that, uh, who says that is possible? I believe it is uh. possible, Kelly. Yes, I really do. And it all has to do with the brain and the way we lay down neural networks in the brain. Um, so as a person who started many decades ago studying violence and the mm -hmm. etiology of violence, over the process of that, I had to get a really good understanding of the brain and how the brain operates because there is a lot of it that truly believes from a physiological perspective. It's not our eyes that see. It's not our ears that hear. It's not our nose that breathe, uh, smells. It's all taking place in our brain. Hmm. And so if you start and you really kind of look at things as having an etiology there, uh, from a physiological perspective, the idea that the brain is plastic, which means it can lay down new neural networks, that means anything that's been learned can be unlearned, oh, wow. and behavior can be relearned in a more appropriate and positive way. So are you saying, and, 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 and first of all, I want to acknowledge you as a doctor of clinical psychology, which is on the screen, but I want to reiterate that, Dr. Margaret Ann Keaton. So 
are you saying that violent acts, be it uh, you know a, homo a homicide or say uh, being uh, the assailant in a domestic violence situation, they've learned that behavior? Yes, basically, and I think it, you, you need to have an understanding that it's, there's sort of a, a, a model of, it's called a stress diathesis model. And basically what that means is that we can have a genetic predisposition for something. So we can come from a long family of you know people who are violent, who've served time in jail for violent behaviors, this, that, and the other. But that doesn't mean that we're gonna come out and be that way. It takes something in the environment to trigger it. Um, and having said that, so it's a combination of both genetics and learned behavior, environmental behavior. So anything though that we have learned, the concept is that we can unlearn it and we can relearn. We can lay down new neural networks. So, but if all the experiences we're, we've had in our life have been negative, so we've witnessed domestic violence in the home. We've been neglected at home. We haven't had the proper nutrition. Uh, we've grown up in poverty. We're in areas where there's violence taking place everywhere. We don't, we don't learn that we have the ability to solve problems by communication. It's all through violence. Mom it beats the kids. Dad beats mom. You get sent to grandma and grandpa's house when mom's in the hospital and dad's sitting in jail for vi domestic violence and then grandpa beats up grandma and then the kids get sent to three different foster homes. If this is all you're experiencing in your life, those are the neural networks you're laying down. Violence is the way you solve problems. Mm. And unfortunately, many of our children are coming up today uh, having come from environments like that. And so we're surprised that we have a high homicide rate? Mm. We shouldn't be, because mm -hmm. that's what they're being taught. But if people would come in and provide them with some pro-social options, children don't want to be violent. They mm -hmm. don't want to be mean. Mm -hmm. it's, it, they want to learn. They want to be good. They want to be productive members of society. But they have to have that option. They have to have someone who's willing to provide that for them if they're not getting it at home. That can be a next door neighbor, it can be a youth minister, it can be a softball coach, it can be a famous basketball player, it can be the lady next door. Uh, but someone has to be there to help them lay down healthier neural networks. Okay, now how does that happen? How do, how do you retrain the brain? How do you lay this new network of neurons, it sounds like what you're saying. And basically, that is exactly what okay. I'm saying, Kelly. Mm -hmm. Laying a, a new network of, of a mental um, circuitry from the neurons in the brain. We come into the world with about 140 uh, billion neurons, which are the brain cells, wow. right? The building blocks and the brain cells of the brain. We have more than we'll ever need, so it's like an insurance policy. But it's only going to lay down and start these neural networks based on the actual experiences we have. So if the experiences we have over and over and over again are the ones that's going to grow strong. Neuroscientists have now found, Kelly, that if we can resist the um, idea of acting on habit, things that we've learned, things mm -hmm. that's like, you know, it's every time somebody makes us mad, we want to cuss at them or, mm -hmm. you know, give them the finger when they're driving by us down the, down the road or whatever. Mm -hmm. Those are habits that we develop. But every time, our neuroscientists have found this now, that we resist that um, habit and we do something more positive, like just simply not giving them the finger or mm -hmm. simply not cussing them out or maybe saying something positive like have a blessed day and just smiling at them. Mm -hmm. Now we are strengthening a new neural network and weakening the old habit. And over time, we can actually make that neural network of the habit of having the cocktail or giving somebody the finger or mm -hmm. you know slapping your wife across the face or whatever, we can weaken those neural networks just simply by resisting the urge to act on them. Okay, which goes, I think, about like dieting. And I found that like I wasn't crazy about apples, but you replace the old bad habit. A lot of people think you can just change it, like it's a decision. It's the repetition of the new that replaces the old, and Absolutely. then I start to crave the apple instead of the chips. Absolutely. How does this play, though, in, say, this, of course, we're in the middle of a major drug epidemic with the heroin ab abuse across the country. I think the president has declared it a national emergency. So how does um, something like th this, this, the thinking that you have here apply to that? Well, there I think you're going to need to go more into sort of a medical uh, aspect of it. And that's something that um, Emerald um, Neuroimaging and uh, Neurorecovery, um, mm -hmm. where they will replace um, 
NAD or niacin in the body through drips, mm -hmm. that's something that works on a more medical component. And you need that when you've got addiction because addiction has actually now gone in and uh, whether it's alcohol or a substance, it's gone in and it's impacted the way the neurons in your brain are firing. Okay, wow. so neurons in our brain communicates across the synapse. Neurotransmitters are sent across that neural synapse. And so what happens is addicts become deplete in niacin. And we need, that's what they get in these NAD drips is niacin. And that actually allows the neurotransmitters to fire appropriately. So what happens is people who are addicted to something, their neurotransmitters, the receiving neurotransmitters are clogged because they don't have the appropriate, uh, appropriate amount of niacin firing, well, we replenish that at, at neuroimaging. They replenish it with uh, the niacin in an NAD drip, and that clears out those receiving cells so that they wow. can fire appropriately. Now, that will take care of addiction. So then you add this other component of laying down new neurotransmitters of how you think. So that way you're changing... Uh, combined with the, the niacin drips, you're changing the way you think very slowly through repetitively choosing different options. So wow. it's a combination of the two. It's pretty um, complicated, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, but it really does make sense and it works tremendously well. But I've experienced that in terms of my battle with, with obesity and that uh, uh, it's taken years mm -hmm. to change the sugar habit. And it doesn't mean I don't eat sugar, but now I can kind of turn it on and off, where yes. before, you know, you just eat it. And then I realized when I was replacing it with other things, but it took, I can remember like eating apples, and like, what is this? And, you know, know. and one day it just clicked like, oh, I kind of like this, but it was after eating like 500 apples. It's, it's repetition <laughs> is the key. And go. unfortunately, we are a, human beings in general, are um, made up of individuals who want to uh, experience instant gratification. And if something isn't instantly gratifying, we give up on it. We're gonna go find something else. So that's something that's very important. This isn't instant gratification. It's something that you work on. It takes rep repetition. Repetition is mm. the key. But eventually you can change these neural networks. You can change the way you think. It's called cognitive restructuring, getting rid of dysfunctional thoughts like apples are yucky and don't taste good and I'm not going to eat them. And well, of mm -hmm. course, a Hershey bar is going to taste better. I mean, mm -hmm. but these are the things we're thinking, all right? And we got to mm -hmm. eliminate that. We've got to change the way we think and we've got to start living with intention instead of by habit. Okay, we're just about out of time, so I, I'm going to have to have you come back. I would love um, to. So how can people tap into this approach or into the, um, the you mentioned the NAD drip and therapy. Mm -hmm. How can people tap in to what you have to offer? Because you're, you're a life coach. Man, you have done it. Your resume is incredible. Well, thank you very much. I feel blessed uh, that I've relatively recently uh, be become connected with uh, Emerald mm -hmm. Neuroimaging and... Um, out in Cicero, and so anybody can look that up. NAD uh, is what we provide there, but we also provide wraparound services. I am a life coach where I'm now working with the patients after they have come into uh, Emerald. Uh, we also have a beautiful an esthetician out there who does beautiful things with the skin and making mm -hmm. people feel better about themselves and look better. Uh, it's just a complete program. We have a, a chiropractor, we have nurses, wow. we have doctors, medical doctors. It's, um, it's wonderful. And I would okay. say, look us up, Emerald. Okay. It sounds like a good chance to kind of detox Absolutely. and take a part of your peace plan. Absolutely, Kelly. Dr. Margaret Ann Keaton, who is the uh, doctor of clinical psychology. Thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. On Inside Indy. And thank you for joining us. I'm your host, Kelly Vaughn, and we'll see you next time. Peace.